from San Francisco, it's The Cube. Covering Red Hat Summit 2018. Brought to you by Red Hat. Hello everyone, welcome to theCUBE special coverage here at Red Hat Summit. This is exclusive, three days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage of theCUBE. I've uh, been covering Red Hat for years, excited to be back here at Moscone West. I'm John Furrier, the co-host of theCUBE, with my co-host analyst this week, John Troyer, who's the CEO of Tech Reckoning, an advisory firm in the technology industry, as well as uh, an influencer, and he advises on influencer and influencer communities. Uh, obviously, it's community-focused. John, great to see you. Welcome to the uh, Red Hat Summit. We're going to kick it off. Oh, great to be here. Thanks for having me. So, you know I'm pretty bullish on open source. I've been from day one. Uh, at my age, you've been lived through the wars of, uh, you know, when it was second-class citizen. Now it's first-class citizen, software power in the world. Again, on and on. This is not a new story. What is the new story is the cloud impact to uh, the world of open source and business. You're seeing the results of Amazon just continue to be skyrocketing. You see Microsoft Azure having their developer conference of Microsoft Build this week. Google I.O. is also this week. There's a variety of events happening. It's all pointing to cloud economics, cloud scale, and the role of software and data. And Red Hat has been a, a big time winner in taking advantage of these trends um, by making some good bets. Absolutely, right. It, uh, I think one of, the, one of the words we're going to hear a lot this week is OpenShift, their, their container and cloud uh, platform. Hybrid cloud is a super big uh, emphasis here. It's hybrid cloud, multi-cloud, already on stage at the first keynote. They had a big stack of machines and they were going out to a multi-cloud uh, multi deployment right there on stage. Uh, open source, also huge this week, right? Uh, the, the keynote of the, the, the tagline of the whole conference, right? If you're interested in open source, you should be here. So, I mean, that's, I think you nailed it. It's going to be about multi-cloud. Yeah, it's exciting for me. I got to say, the disruption that's happening, obviously with IT, with cloud, is pretty much out there. We pretty much recognize IT is transforming into a whole nother look in terms of how it's operating. But the interesting thing that's just happening recently is the overwhelming takeover of Kubernetes in the conversation and in the stack. You're seeing a rallying point and a rallying uh, cry and establishing a de facto standard of Kubernetes. The big news of, of 2018 is, is to me the de facto standard of Kubernetes across a multi-cloud, hybrid cloud architecture to allow developers and also infrastructure providers the ability to move workloads around, managing workloads across clouds. This is kind of the holy grail outcome everyone's looking for is how do I get to a true multi-cloud world? And I think Kubernetes this year has the stake in the ground to saying we're going to make that the, the interoperable capability. And Red Hat made a bet a couple years ago, three, four years ago, everyone's scratching their head. What the hell are they doing with Kubernetes? Uh, what's Red Hat? They're looking like geniuses now because of the results. Yeah, absolutely. In fact, I, you know, I, I think by the end, my joke is going to be this is the OpenShift Summit. Uh, I'll be very interested, John, in your observations. You were at KubeCon last week, so that's the open source project and the ecosystem around Kubernetes. Red Hat owns, or well, Red Hat owns a lot of Kubernetes. Red Hat employs many of the Kubernetes leaders. They, are, they have really taken over from Google in a lot of ways about the implementation and go forward path for Kubernetes. So this is, the, this is the show that takes that open source project and packages it into something that an IT buyer can understand and take. Yeah, so, I, I got to say, I mean, one of the things that's interesting, and this is not well reported in the news, it's a nuanced point, but it's kind of an interesting, I think, I think a, uh, an inflection point for Red Hat. By them buying CoreOS has been a really good outcome for both companies. CoreOS, pure open source DNA in that business. Those guys are, we're doing some amazing technology development. Again, all pure open source. I mean, pure, total purist. Nothing wrong with being pure open source. My point is, when you have that kind of religious you know, point of view, and then the pressure to monetize that Docker has had, we know what happened there. So, you know, CoreOS was doing amazing things, but kind of took a lot of pressure from the market. How are you going to make money? And you know, you know, I always say, it's hard to make money when you're trying to do it too early. Right. And, and so CoreOS lands at Red Hat, who has generations of commercialization. Those two together is really going to give Red Hat the capability to go to the next level when you talk about applications. It's going to increase their total, total addressable market. It's going to give them more range. And with Kubernetes becoming the de facto standard, OpenShift 
now can become a key platform as a service that really enables new applications, new management capabilities. This should expand the RHEL opportunity from a market standpoint in a significant, meaningful way. So I think you know, if you look like a financial analyst or you're out there looking at this going, hmm, where is the dots connecting? It's connecting up the stack, software as a service, mm -hmm. with DevOps, with cloud native, Red Hat's position well. So that's my takeaway from KubeCon. Yeah. Interesting, yeah, before we move away from CoreOS, uh, a lot of announcements today about how, their, how Red Hat will be incorporating CoreOS technologies into their platform. Uh, they talked about the operator framework. I think one of the bigger pieces of news is that uh, CoreOS's OS, uh, called Container Linux, changes its name back to CoreOS and will now be the standard container operating system for Red Hat. That's kind of big news because Red Hat had its own uh, atomic host, uh, its own kind of micro uh, mini uh, Linux distribution, and so now they're switching over to that. They also talked about Tectonic, which actually is a really good automated operation stack. Some of those technologies in the future, they will be incorporated into OpenShift. So they were talking a little bit about futures, but at least they've given a roadmap. No one was quite sure what the super smart, you know, rocket scientists at CoreOS were doing here, and so now we know a little more. And also at KubeCon, they announced the uh, open source uh, of the, of the um, uh, operator framework. It's an open source toolkit for managing uh, Kubernetes clusters. Again, this is all, I mean, first of all, I love the CoreOS name. This is all about what Red Hat's doing. Now, let's not forget the ecosystem that Red Hat has. So you're talking about a company that's been successful in open source for multiple generations now, looking forward to this next generation of modern infrastructure, you're seeing the stack look completely different with cloud. Look at all the presentations from Amazon, Google, Microsoft. The stack is not the old stack, it's a new, it's a new concept. New things are happening, so you got to swap some pieces out. You get CoreOS, you bring that in, new puzzle piece. But look at the deals they're doing. They did a, a relationship with IBM, so IBM's back into the fold with Red Hat joining forces. Containerizing some of their biggest app, biggest components like WebLogic and, and uh, DB2 and MQ? I think the containerization will create a nice compatibility mode to bring these old legacy apps into a, uh, a modern cloud native architecture and gives that an opportunity to kind of get into the game, but also, bring cloud native to the table. Yeah, absolutely. You got it's IoT added. Edge, all these new applications. I mean, you just can't go anywhere without hearing about Internet of Things, machine learning, AI, cameras, whatnot. All this is happening. So absolutely. we're going to break it down all week for the next three days. Red Hat Summit, it's all about containers. It's all about the Linux moment, kind of going to the next level, cloud native, big time data action, all the great stuff happening. All done with open source, with projects, with new products being commercialized from these projects. This is the open source ethos. This is, of course, the CUBE coverage. We'll be back with more live coverage here in San Francisco at Moscone West after this short break.